So here's what happened. Uh, you had, on Friday night, Hundreds out on 31st Street Beach, this is a nice area, running around, lighting fires, chasing cop cars, smashing windows on a squad car. 14-year-old was shot. 14. Saturday night, hundreds went to Chicago's Loop, which was previously a nice area. It was, it's a business hub. People go there for cocktails after work. Whatever. It's, you didn't have to worry if you're in the Loop. Not to mention Michigan Avenue, where all the top stores are. Here's video. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, Michigan Avenue is the nicest area of Chicago. It's where you go when you're a tourist there. You got the Intercontinental, you got all the nice department stores, the Bloomingdale's Mall. It's beautiful. Um, jumped on cars, the CTA bus. One woman told Fox 32, Chicago, that people jumped on her windshield. They smashed it, then attacked her husband as he sat inside the vehicle. Um, the police were unable to handle the crowd. Two teenagers were shot that night. 14-year-old the night before, two teenagers shot that night. Six juveniles arrested, nine adults as well. And then there's this video. And I want to give you the appropriate disclaimer on it. Um, we found it. It was all over the internet from CWB Chicago, it's, which is a Twitter account covering public safety on Chicago's north side. They say they were created in 2013 by five Chicagoans who had grown disheartened with inaccurate information being provided uh, at a local community policing meetings. So they wanted to bring truth to what was really happening uh, and provide original public safety reporting. They say this happened during this past week um, on Saturday night at 129 North Wabash, which is, a, again, a very nice area. Um, I lived there for five years, as I say. So they say this is from this past weekend. We haven't been able to independently confirm that. Here's the video. It's about 20 seconds. I'll describe it for the listening audience once it's done. It's horrifying. It, you, what you see is a, uh, she looks to me like she's in her 20s, young woman trying to go into her apartment building. She's, she's by herself. And then this mob grabs her. Some guy gets her a headlock and then they just start punching and stomping on her. We don't know her condition. She easily could have been killed. And um, what's the little moniker on there? Yay, we got active. Yay. Yay, so fun. We beat the living daylights out of some innocent woman just trying to go into her apartment building. Um, in this particular video, the victim is white. Her attackers are black. I mention it because had it been the other way around, this would be getting covered by every single news agency in the country, right? Had it been a bunch of white people picking on one black woman trying to go into her apartment, but no, um, it's, it's the other way around, so it gets ignored. And the elect, the, the mayor elect, Brandon Johnson, puts out the following statement. In no way do I condone the destructive activity we saw in the loop in the lakefront this weekend. It's unacceptable and has no place in our city. However, it is not constructive to demonize youth who have otherwise been starved of opportunities in their own communities. Our city must work together to create spaces for youth to gather safely and responsibly under adult guidance and supervision. And goes on from there. So that is that the problem? They have no safe spaces to gather under adult guidance. Therefore, they beat the living shit out of innocent civilians, shoot teenagers, and set fire to cop cars. Is that is that an accurate assessment that, of where we are? I, I doubt that they have adult guidance in the home. That's my guess. And Correct. if one looks at numbers, you would see that that's that is also true. Um, I remember wh when I was um, when I read that statement, I was waiting for that. However, and good God, did it come leaping out at you and say, "I'm going to do a lot of work right now." And it reminded me of an old Chris Rock bit from the late 1990s. Do you remember Bill Clinton's Midnight Basketball program? Uh, mm. Chris Rock had a funny bit about this when he's like, yeah, thank God I have this basketball in my hand or if I wouldn't, I'd be killing somebody right now. Mm -hmm. Like, they, like la this used to be laughable stuff that we would, you know, I, I just need to be distracted by something else because otherwise these instincts will take over me and I will just beat a random woman 
um, half to death. And God knows, I mean, what kind of condition she's in. It doesn't seem like anybody in the media is trying to follow up on her condition. I haven't seen anything about that. I could be missing something. I am also presuming, because I saw this uh, video online too, Megan, I'm assuming that uh, the that it is from, you know, this week or whatever. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference because it's so horrifying either way. But yeah. the funny thing is I looked this up. And this is a, 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 I saw this headline this morning. This is the response you're getting from the the mayor elect. There's a random headline this morning from a uh, Chicago, I think, CBS affiliate, and it's uh, from yesterday. Chicago shootings today: colon thirty five shot. That was a day ago. It is a a common headline. They just it's a it's a fe it's a feature. It's a series. Mm. Chicago shootings today: thirty five. That is outrageous. And by the way, if you want to make a case. For the Second Amendment in Chicago, which, as we know, has limited access to uh, firearms, and you see the response to this in the Heller case, um, I, if I were living in Chicago and I were living in the loop, I living on Wabash, I would be at the store right now trying to protect myself or myself. Yep. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm being mobbed by people. I don't feel that way. I've never felt that way where I live, so I've never had to avail myself of these things. But if if this is so outrageous in the response is so despicable that, you know, you should say we need to flood the streets with people. And by the way, it's the it's the George Floyd thing. And it's also like where do you, how do you get into these situations? How do you get criticized as a cop? And the George Floyd thing, obviously, the guy went to jail. He should have been criticized. He should have been prosecuted, in my opinion. But you're going to have to use your weapon. And there was a case last year in Chicago when the video came out. There's a guy that was shot against the fence. Do you remember this thing? Yeah. And, and he would pulling. I mean, it was this person was crying, this cop crying on the ground, captured on somebody else's body cam. He was dragged through the public as this is maybe the next George Floyd. And the guy was protecting himself. Like, why do you want for a, for a, a meager salary to be in a position where there are 35 shootings a night? You're going to have to use your weapon pretty, pretty frequently, I'd imagine. Yeah. So you're drawing like, your gun every yeah, day. Yeah. You're drawing your gun a lot. It's like, there's no, there's nothing good in that for you. It's not just the however in that statement. For me, it is in no way do I condone. Let's imagine you're the mayor of Los Angeles. There's an earthquake. In no way do I condone the earthquake. <laughs> what kind of response? It doesn't make any sense. Why would you condone the Nobody horrible Nobody condoning thing? it. No. Right. You don't have to say that you don't condone the horrible action. In no way do I condone 9-11. Well, I, I, I have to say that you, you have to say that because your next statement is so shitty. Well, this, this is it. Right? Because, <laughs> because their entire approach to the problem of crime in the city of Chicago and in, in various other places as well is it's centered on the criminals mm -hmm. and it's not centered on the victims. Yeah. In which case, yes, it is very important for there to be a preamble when you're addressing the <laughs> suffering of the victims. And whatever the province of this particular video with, with this woman, which I, I at this point cannot watch. It is yeah. too disturbing. I have family that lives in the away. Chicago. That woman looks like someone who I, I love mm -hmm. and care about who lives in the city. And every time I see it, I imagine something terrible happening to her. And she's already been attacked physically in the city, a random act mm -hmm. of violence, um, a person, a young person who had already been um, previously arrested, but never incarcerated for this oh, that's and right. was not yeah. prosecuted again after this yeah. attack. So I, I've got a bit of trauma related to this, to use yeah. a, a word that's somewhat loaded now. Um, there, there's, some, there's so many disturbing attributes uh, of this story that I think are important to pay attention to. The, the increase in violent crime in Chicago is happening in a very small area. It is largely impacting particular communities. The people who live in these communities live in a literal war zone. The statistics, when you pay attention to the number of shootings and the number of fatalities, rival what happens in a place uh, in, in the Middle East where there's an active ongoing conflict. And most of the people who live in these communities are decent, hardworking people who like go to work, who, who care about their families and are trying desperately to make a life for themselves. They are also victims of the predators who, who wantonly prey on their neighbors. In many cases, these are young people. In many cases, these are young people who live in homes that aren't necessarily able to give them the kind of support that one would hope kids get. Either way, that there should be consequences for perpetrating violent acts that we should generally like hold people to account and have an expectation that you will behave yourself in a civilized way. It's entirely reasonable to have that expectation. And I can't think of anything more disgustingly racist than the insinuation that when these particular people like do something wrong, we can't hold them accountable.
I mean, mm-hmm. what, what do you expect from them? This is who they are. This is what they are. It is an outrageous perspective. Mm -hmm. And it is so detestable to see this from uh, Chicago's elected leadership. It's a city that I care about a great deal. I love Chicago. People are friendly on the street in a bizarre sort of way. It's a big city (laughs) where you're walking down the street and someone will say hello to you. Yeah, Yeah, in certain places, in the nice places where I'd want to be. Um, (laughs) But but, but the the city is in huge trouble. And it is it is so sad to see the political the political leadership of that city not just abdicating their responsibility, like actively doing things and saying things in public that make me think that they are going to cause further pain and harm to the citizens of that city. Okay. And that Camille, mayor elect- you, you just raised a good point. Cause I, can I tell you? So I I lived in Chicago for five years. As I said I've also lived in Baltimore. I was just down in Washington D.C. Um, all those cities have one thing in common: they're very diverse. You, you will not live in those cities for any length of time without having a multiracial set of friends, um, all of whom are law-abiding citizens who feel as you do, who feel as I do, who are be horrified by this. But to try to excuse this violence, right? Because I don't know that he'd be excusing this violence, as I said at the top, if this is a bunch of white kids who were hurting a black girl. I think his instinct is he's got to excuse the behavior of these kids, black kids who came from the South side of Chicago to cause trouble inside the city. It is absolutely an insult to the black communities in these cities who the vast majority of whom are law abiding and are as appalled by this as we are. So what does that say about Brandon Johnson? Mudwater is a coffee alternative with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. With just a fraction of the caffeine that's in a cup of coffee, you're gonna get the energy from a cup of coffee without the jitters or the crash. Each ingredient was added for a purpose. Cacao and chai for mood and a hint of caffeine. Lion's mane to support focus. Cinnamon for its antioxidants and much, much more. Mud is Whole30 approved, 100% USDA organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan, and kosher certified. Mudwater donates monthly to the Berkeley Center for the Science of Psychedelics, as Mudwater believes the country is in a mental health epidemic and sees psychedelics as useful tools for individuals with depression, PTSD, anxiety, and other mental health problems. Go to mudwater.com, that's spelled mud, W-T-R, dot com, slash Megan, to support the show and use code Megan Mud for 15% off. Mudwater.com, spelled M-U-D-W-T-R, dot com, slash Megan, and use that code Megan Mud for 15% off your order. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.